You're listening to the Life with Old Dogs podcast, and I'm your host, Dawn Mimna, primary caretaker of all of our wonderful senior German Shepherds right here at Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary. Okay, welcome back. This week we are covering perianal fistula, also known as anal furunculosis. Um, This is a serious medical condition in senior German shepherds that causes chronic inflammation and ulcerative-like tunnel lesions of the perianal tissues surrounding um, a dog's anus. Okay, so it starts... It starts as, uh, it looks like tiny little holes in the dog's skin um, in the the anal area, and then it evolves into um, deep tunnel-like lesions. And if not treated, the the whole anus becomes consumed by these tunnel-like lesions. Perianal fistula is, it's relatively common amongst senior German shepherds. In fact, of all the diagnosed canine perianal fistula cases, a whopping 80%, folks, 80% are middle-aged and older German shepherds. That is huge. And unfortunately, most of those cases are male German shepherds. That's not to say that females can't get perianal fistula, but but a large number of the cases diagnosed are male German shepherds. Um, unfortunately, many German shepherd owners, um, you know, they're not aware. They're not aware of uh, what perianal fistula is, and sometimes they're not even sure if their dog has it until it progresses into a very painful um, stage. Okay, so let's talk about what causes perianal fistula. Uh, like some of the other illnesses, diseases that we talked about in the top 20 most common health issues in senior German shepherds, there really is, um, it, it's not it's not really understood yet what causes perianal fistula. Um, one theory is that um, our beloved German shepherds, of course, we know they have low-hanging, uh, broad-based, heavy tails, um, and that may contribute to perianal fistula because the position of the tail over the anus inhibits the ability for um, adequate airflow in the anal region. So not enough air, okay? They're they're going potty. Unfortunately, they can't wipe their hineys. And then um, like a fecal matter film is, is left. And if they have any sort of, you know, issues down there, um, it could become infected and all that good stuff. Um, no, no air hits that area. Another possibility is the impaction or infection or rupture of the um, one or both anal sacs. As we know, or you may not know, uh, the anal sacs are on both sides of the anus. Um, so they're, you know, they're, they're there in that main area. Um, but that has not been proven to be um, a direct cause of perianal fistula either. Uh, more recent studies point to perianal fistula being an autoimmune disease, uh, like some of the other top 20 most common health issues in senior German shepherds. Autoimmune disease seems to be a reoccurring theme in some of these health issues, and perianal fistula is no different. And also um, genetics. Uh, there seems to be a genetic role in who gets it and who doesn't get it because it has been seen in um, certain um, certain um, bloodlines uh, in German shepherds. So, you know, whole families could end up with the, with the disease. So if, in fact, you have a German shepherd with perianal fistula uh, and he or she is not spayed or neutered, you definitely don't want to breed that German shepherd. 
All right, let's cover the signs, signs and symptoms of perianal fistula. Um, I have to say right off the bat here, we we have not had one senior German Shepherd resident here at Woody's Place with perianal fistula, thankfully. Um, there's a, There's been a couple of the top 20 most common health issues in senior German Shepherds that we have not experienced here yet at Woody's Place, and diabetes was another. So um, really don't have any personal experience with perianal fistula, but... Um, we certainly did research the signs and symptoms well, and I'm going to give them to you now. So the first would be straining to defecate, like they're having a just a real hard time trying to defecate. Uh, and they also may be crying um, or in visible pain, invisible, I didn't mean invisible like you couldn't see, but actually in pain when when they're trying to defecate. Because it hurts, obviously. They have holes and sores around their anus. And then, obviously, they're trying to eliminate, which is not to get gross, but it's it's stretching the anus. And that, you know, I mean, you could picture that. That, that hurts. Um, persistently licking the anal area or even biting at the anal area. Uh, diarrhea and or constipation. Now, uh Along with perianal fistula, some some senior German shepherds or mid-aged German shepherds also have inflammatory bowel, bowel disease. So that could contribute to the diarrhea or constipation. Uh, the stools, they may be mucousy or they may even have blood mixed in. Um, obviously, again, the anus is sore. It's, you know, not in, in uh, optimum health and when it expands to allow for the fecal matter to pass through, it, it certainly could add blood to the stool as it passes through. Uh, loss of appetite. Unwillingness to sit. That's a big one. Who wants to sit on your hiney when it hurts? Reluctancy to wag the tail. I mean, again, if his hiney hurts, his tail's right there. He might not want to wag his tail like uh, with such exuberance like he he did before um, his hiney started to hurt. Uh, changes in behavior such as depression or ag- um, aggression. I mean, you can you can certainly understand that if he's not feeling good and he can't explain what's going on. He could be depressed over that because he's not experiencing any relief from his pain. Uh, aggression could be another one. If someone, you know, touches his tail, he might turn around and snap because that area hurts. And obviously he can't verbalize that it hurts. So uh, what what would it look like? So again, perianal fistula looks like small oozing holes surrounding the anus. Okay, that's how it starts out is small oozing holes, like pus-like oozing holes around surrounding the anus. And if that's not addressed, then the holes just grow bigger and bigger and bigger until they become tunnel-like formations, which can be rather deep and painful. Um, and again, this is painful. This is a, a painful um, condition for your fur friend to have. Um, all right. Additionally, there could be pus and infection. And lastly, with pus and infection comes a bad smell. So you would you would notice may notice a bad smell. So now you here you have your German Shepherd and and you notice something's not right with his his around his anus, uh, maybe you're giving him a bath, maybe you notice it then, maybe you just notice he's constantly licking, you decide to lift his tail and look, and then you see something is definitely not right. So you take him to your veterinarian, and she listens to your concerns. She'll check out your your dog's uh, medical history, um, and then perform an, a physical in- examination, which will incru- include a rectal exam. Um, and then at that time, she's also going to check out the anal sacs to see if they are impacted or infected or ruptured and then proceed accordingly. Um, she may also take samples of the cell tissue, uh, cells or tissue uh, from the anal sac or the fistulas themselves while performing a rectal exam for further testing, such as bacteria or something of that nature. Um, and this 
Dep- depending on two things, your your dog's temperament and how far along the um, condition has progressed, she she your your dog may have to be sedated for this examination because it again is very painful for our fur friends and to uh, really assess the situation he he may have to be uh, knocked out for that to take place because if the vet is trying to t- do a thorough examination and your fur friend's so upset that he's you know not just biting, trying to bite the veterinarian, but just won't sit still, um, then then she's not going to not going to be able to give a proper diagnosis. So don't be surprised if um, you have or think your dog has perianal fistula that he or she may have to be sedated for the rectal exam. Hey there, folks. This week's episode is being sponsored by The Shepherd Shop. The Shepherd Shop sells German Shepherd and dog-related merchandise, as well as our one-of-a-kind Woody's Place merchandise, with proceeds supporting Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary. So to check out The Shepherd Shop and support the sanctuary, head on over to www.wpsgss.org backslash shepherd shop. That's S. H E P H E R D S H O P P E. And now back to our episode. All right, moving on into treatment for perianal fistula. Since a whopping 80%, that's that's kind of discouraging. <laughs> Since a whopping 80% of those Suffering from perianal fistula will, in fact, suffer from it again. Treatment involves both medication and surgical tactics to ensure the best possible outcome. So, yeah, that that is really disheartening. Um, we we love the breed. We love German shepherds. They're you know, they're so majestic and they're such they're such beautiful and loyal creatures. I mean, who, who, who can't love them? <laughs> I, can, I can think of a few people, but I love them. And obviously you do too, or you wouldn't be tuning into this podcast. So that's really disheartening to hear that 80% of all cases of uh, canine peri- perianal fistula are um, German shepherds. And then 80% of those who suffer from perianal fistula w- will suffer from it again. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. Don't love that. All right. So again, uh, both medical and surgical tactics are utilized or can be utilized. All right. Let's, so let's talk medication first. Um, there may be an antibiotic prescribed, such as metronidazole, and uh, that's a heavy hitting antibiotic. And you know you have to be careful with that because not only does it wipe out bad bacteria, it wipes out good bacteria as well. So if your if your fur friend is on metronidazole for whatever the reason, you definitely want to incorporate uh, pre and probiotics into their diet to help um, help their microbiome. Um, Again, that's a that's a heavy hitting anti- antibiotic, and we have had to use it before. Um, don't love to use it, but let's face it if it's if it's if it's going to be um, the solution for something that's making one of our residents really ill, we will use it and adjust their diet accordingly to help uh, put the good bacteria back in their their gut, um, so that their gut health is as optimum as it can be. All right. The next one is cyclosporine. Cyclosporine. I still can't say that right. <laughs> I said it. I said it in the last episode as well. Um, yeah, it was in the the Panis uh, Life with All Dogs uh, blog post and podcast. I am just horrible, horrible at pronouncing medications. It's cyclosporine. And again, it inhibits immune system, the immune system function, uh, because. Once again, this perianal fistula is thought to be um, autoimmune, autoimmune related or have an autoimmune component. All right. Another one would be kinocodazole, kinoconazole, K-E-T-O-C-O-N-A-Z-O-L-E. And that is an antifungal cream, right? So that would be a topical solution as opposed to 
uh, ingesting. The next one is prednisone. Of course, that's a steroid. All right. And for those of you who don't know, prednisone works on the immune system to help relieve swelling, redness, itching, and any sort of allergic reaction. And another one is tacrolimus. That's T-A-C-R-O-L-I-M-U-S. M-U-S. Tacrolimus. Uh, That is a topical immunosuppressant cream. So again, that's topical, not to be ingested. All right. Um, If, let's just say that the perianal fistula has, has progressed, obviously medication is still going to be on the table, but then surgery may be needed as well. Um, surgery may be needed to affect, uh, remove the affected and dead tissue from the area, um, possible removal of the anal sac, and also to repair any of the lesions, the tunnel-like lesions, uh, but only if they're, they're small. All right, so the surgery method of choice uh, by by veterinarians is um, it's either laser surgery or cryo surgery. Uh, that's that's freezing. That's when you freeze something off, as well as cauterization. Um, if surgery is performed, your fur friend your fur friend's going to have open sores for a few weeks. All right, it's it's not going to look uh, you know it's not going to be an instant fix. So I don't want you thinking that. So he's going to have open source for a few weeks, which are going to require regular attention and care. Um, you want to make sure that they're cleaned and disinfected and, you know, not getting all, all messed up so that infection sets in. And to ensure that um, your fur friend's anus heals properly. So other modalities of treatment may include... Uh, these are, well, the first one's pretty much common sense. It's it's keeping the hair trimmed around the anus, right? You, you want as much air to aerate through that area as possible. So keeping keeping the, the hair trimmed all around the anus is certainly beneficial. Um, some veterinarians even opt to remove the tail so that air is air is getting in there. Um, and that's obviously you don't want to do that. That's something you don't want to resort to. But if it comes down to, hey, you know, your your senior German shepherd's chances of um, not having to deal with this in the future or as as often will be um, will be a whole lot better if we remove the tail, then that is something that you may want to consider. Another thing would be changing the diet to a novel protein diet. Okay, and a novel protein diet would be a, a one one ingredient that uh, one protein, let's say that your your um, German Shepherd has not eaten before. Right, that could be kangaroo, venison, or duck. Uh, do know that we have Atticus who needs a diet like that. Um, and it's duck. We give him duck. We try kangaroo. I don't, uh, he was actually allergic to kangaroo. Um, rabbit, he does okay on venison. He does okay on duck. He does the best one. So I, I totally get that. So a novel protein diet. Um, and that doesn't make it a hypoallergenic diet. Um, it just ups the chances of your senior German shepherd not having an allergic reaction to it because he probably hasn't had that protein before. But again, that's not necessarily the case because Atticus, we gave him kangaroo and lo and behold, he was allergic to kangaroo. Like really when, I don't know when he ever had kangaroo before in his life, but he was allergic to it. Uh, In order for that to be a novel protein diet to be the most effective it can possibly be, that means this is all your this is all your German shepherds eating, all right? There's no treats, no table scraps, nothing else except for that novel protein diet. Oh, uh, and another another dietary choice would be a hypoallergenic prescription diet. You know, I'm not a big fan of that, but we have we have incorporated before. You know, whatever whatever works is how I look at it. Um, so we have incorporated that before, 
And the best type of hypoallergenic diet consists of a hydrolyzed protein. All right, and that means the protein involved is split into minuscule pieces, and the dog's immune system won't go into overdrive, uh, causing an allergic reaction. But no matter what type of diet you put your food, your um, your senior German Shepherd on for perianal fistula, he's basically going to have to stay on that special diet for the rest of his life. And also, just a little side note here, you absolutely should run the diet by your veterinarian. Not just run it by them, but discuss it in length to make sure that that um, your veterinarian approves of the new diet. All right, and lastly, keeping keeping the area clean, um, cleansed with antiseptic solution and water is is going to go a long way. So just a little side note here, another little side note here. Sorry if I'm moving around here. I'm just fidgeting in my seat. <laughs> uh, treatment can take months to get the disease under control, and reoccurrence is typical in about 20 Oh, no, wait. Let me let me back up a second here. Um treatment can take months to get the disease under control and reoccurrence is typical in dogs once treatment stops. In 20% of the dogs, treatment doesn't work at all. In those cases, treatment comes down to maintaining the disease as best as possible. I wish I had better news about the prognosis, but unfortunately, the prognosis is perianal fistula. If your fur friend has perianal fistula, perianal fistula requires lifelong care, whether it be uh, via a special diet, medication, additional surgeries, or a, a, a collection of those modalities. Um, and fecal incontinence is an issue or can become an issue as a result of nerve damage from perianal fistula. So there's that to deal with as well. Um, furthermore, the drugs used for treatment, if you, know, you need to keep using them repeatedly, um, they can have a serious side effect as well. And I'm sure, as you can imagine, uh, aside from perianal fistula taking quite a toll on your senior German Shepherd, it can be rather expensive to treat as well. So I, I wish I had better news. And, you know, I hear myself saying this again and again with some of these uh, top 20 health issues in senior German Shepherds. And uh, believe me, it's, it's been kind of depressing really delivering news like that. I don't like it because <laughs> obviously I want, I want happy endings for um, our senior German Shepherd residents and yours as well. But this is, this is real life here and perianal, perianal fistula is not pretty. All right. So that is that. Um, we are one episode away from being done the top 20 health issues in senior German Shepherds. And the last one is uh, thyroid issues. And we've had, we've had to deal with that a couple of times here now at the sanctuary. Um, and we do, have, we do have little Miss Savvy here with a thyroid issue that we are treating her for. So we will discuss that in the next and final episode for the season. I have been at this, folks, the top 20 health issues in senior German Shepherds for four months now. Okay, it's been four months. So it has been an extraordinarily long season for the podcast and the blog post. And after this, I am taking a much needed break because there are other things I want to do. Um, and when I come back next season, it's either going to be in four, it's going to be four to six weeks. The next season is going to be all about degenerative myelopathy. We did kind of um, gloss over it here in the top 20 health issues, but we are going to take a deep dive into 
degenerative myelopathy, and we are going to have guest um, guest speakers on talking to you about their experiences with degenerative myelopathy, uh, wheel carts, harnesses, how to utilize all of those things, and uh, how to best care for your senior German Shepherd with DM. So I'm looking forward to that, but I'm also not going to rush through my break either. <laughs> So anyway, uh, check out the blog post f- uh, that co- uh, that coincides with this um, with this podcast. I'll make sure I drop a link in the show notes. And if you can, please, please, please be so kind and leave us a uh, a like, a th- thumbs up, a comment, share our podcast. We would really, really appreciate it. So more people can with senior German shepherds can learn about the top twenty health issues. All right, folks, until next week, be well. 